Welcome to episode six, and I've made a little bit of progress on the HMS Victory, but as many of you know, I took a vacation, so I'm behind schedule a little bit. And at the end of episode five, I mentioned that I would have a special announcement. And I actually jumped the gun because I was too excited and already started another project, so now I'm gonna be building two ships at the same time. And my big announcement is I'm going to be building my dream ship and as many of you know I built the Black Pearl off of a inferior uh, type model and I ended up spending extra money that I didn't need to had I just bought the right kit to start with. I'll be building the ZHL 2021 golden version of the Black Pearl. So do a search on Boiler Dan 1, all one word, Boiler Dan with the number one and you'll see a whole list of all the different small ships that I started with and the original Black Pearl that I that I did build it was successful but uh, the materials are not near the quality as what's in the ZHL version so I'm going to start building that and I'll try to finish the HMS Victory at the same time so let me bring you up to date on my adventure with the HMS Victory while reviewing episode 5 I noticed an error that I made and I think I can correct it. I glued this section to the very top of this and in reality there are braces down there. It should be recessed. So I think I can take my knife blade, slip it in here and cut that back out and drop it down. It's going to be probably between a quarter and a half inch. So here's the part I'm talking about and I'm hoping I get my blade to slip right in there. Now the other side. So you can see where these braces were, and I don't know what I was thinking, gluing it on top of here. Hopefully I can get it to fit in. If I start from the front and slide, there we go. Okay, it's going to take a little more work. I have about oh, a quarter of an inch or so to push it back. Oh, there it goes. Perfect. Now I realize that's a small detail, but apparently there should be a little edge there. It makes sense that you wouldn't just fall right off the edge of the deck. So, Correction made on this particular feature at the front of the ship. The instructions show that this would come in to back here. It really doesn't quite fit so I took it out to the very front. And the other thing that I'm doing is the connector points where it contacts the ship here and then also here. I'm feathering those, just taking a small file and um, kind of making a beveled edge so it'll be flat against the ship. Here they are, glued in place, pretty well matched up here. They do stick out just a little bit from here, so I may end up uh, sanding this down so it's all even. It's minute. I'm going to wait and see how everything fits together before I make that decision. Another area that I've been experimenting with is making my own cargo boxes. And here's an assortment of different small squared off dowels. This is a quarter inch. This is probably half inch. And this tiny one, it doesn't say, but it's probably an eighth of an inch. And that is going to work pretty well for the victory ship that I'm working on. So what I do is I just cut them into different um, size rectangles. And to give them some age, take a uh, propane torch. I put down some aluminum foil. I have a wet paper towel to douse them in case they inflame. Put this on the lowest flame that I can. And then just lightly, let me get some of this out of the way here. The larger ones will take us a little bit longer, but I darken the edges. Okay. 
So you can tell the large one is a little harder dark to darken. The middle ones don't take much at all. This one I got a little wet, so then it's harder to get them to turn dark. But it gives some character to them. And these are not really done. I'm just giving you an idea or an example. And I will add some stains. So let me show you that. And then you'll see the finished product later on in the build. I don't want all the cargo boxes to look the same. So I've got some stain here. This uh, is a black cherry, dark walnut, and red Sedona. And they pick up the stain at different rates. This red Sedona just barely picks it up unless you let it soak for a long time. So I'm just going to dip these in different ones. And I don't care if I mix a little bit because I want them to look different. And I'll let the stain sit longer on some so they absorb a little more color. You can clearly see this is the unstained and then these are the different stains. And the, the difference probably doesn't even show up on camera and it's just very subtle. But it can make all the difference in the world for making it look a little more authentic. You can buy cargo, I've done that before, and then you have to paint it, but it's hard to get the individual boxes. Um, it's just difficult to get it covered and I don't think it looks near as good as the little blocks of wood that I make. The kit did not come with belaying pins or any supports for that, so what I'm doing is making one of those. So I've marked where I want the pins to be, and I'm going to use my new drill press. Test fit of one of the belaying pins. That will work just right. So this will go up against the inside edge of one of the rails and the belaying pins all across. Now I'll cut these into sections because they'll have to fit in between the cannons. So that gives you an idea. I'll sand this down because I have pencil marks on it and then uh, stain all of these. And they're going to go in this area here on the inside between all the cannon ports. Unless I decide these pins are too large for this ship, which that may be the case. If that's the case, I will have a backup plan. I'll have to decide. Because, yeah, I think those pins are too big. I've been playing around with making some very small cannons, and these are some of the ones I've been working on. I thought it might be an interesting segment to show how I've been making those, because I've learned some, um, I guess, tricks of the trade on how to make them better and easier. The cannons I'm working on now are very, very small, so I'm using 1 8 inch poplar. And even though this is not exactly precisely round, it's pretty rounded. So the first step is I drilled a hole in this block of wood that is the eighth inch size. And that's to hold it perfectly in place to drill a hole. However, the problem I was running into is being able to drill a hole dead center. I just, you know, lining it up, I was having a terrible time and I never could get it quite right. And here is what I did to correct that. So I put a piece of the 1 8 inch dowel in my lathe. I'm going to sand this down to a fine point, dead center. Now that gives me a very 
small area to focus my attention on. So let me take it over to my project. It's easier to put in from the back side and then tap it through. Now I can focus all my attention exactly on the tip of that dowel rod. When you get this in place, then you need to look at all angles. So I'm moving around to different sides and actually I'm a little left of center so I need to move it again. And if you take your time and look at every direction you'll do a much better job of getting it centered. I think that's it. So here's a dowel. I'm going to work from the underside up. Okay, now you can see that hole recessed in there just a little bit. Now I pull it out and not perfect, but I'm getting there. So uh, you can see I've got it pretty well centered and even this dowel isn't perfectly round, but it's got a good start and it'll round out in the lathe. Use the hole to give me a good center. And now I can tighten this down. So I just tighten these slightly, not a lot, because it would actually crush the wood. But the end piece I won't use anyway. So once this is secured, now I can tighten this on there, push gently but firmly. I've got a good cannon sample here that I like. So I want to kind of match the length. And I make it a little longer because I tend to I sand off the very tip of the cannon. So that's my length. Sometimes I'll mark this with a pencil. So I'll go ahead and do that for example. And I mark where all the grooves are. Now I'll form the barrel. And there's my cannon. What I'll do is I'll sand a little bit of this off carefully by hand until I get the tip of the barrel the way I want it to look. Once I get the barrel shaped to pretty much how I want, I can return to the drill press because there's just a tiny little hole there and push it up from the bottom. And improve that hole. So, there's another cannon. I'm still undecided if I'll use them, but I've made quite a few to start with. You know, they're, each is a little different, unique unto itself, but um, we'll see what I decide when it's time to mount them on the ship. Here's one unpainted that I just uh, put in the cannon port to see what it would look like. So I can always go back to the ones that came with the ship, but the the reason I like using mine is they're actually round like they should be and I can make additional ones because the kit does not come with uh, enough to do the entire ship. Not that I'll do the entire ship, but I would like to have more than just the few that came with it.